Welcome back everyone. Today I start a new project, a communications receiver that came to me dead on arrival. Haven't plugged it in, haven't looked at it, so let's have a look at it together. So this is the next project to look at, the TRIO model 9R59DS communications receiver. Let's get the cover off and see what it looks like inside. Okay, so here it is with the covers off. A few things to look at I guess. Um, interesting how these uh, shields for the valves are somewhat corroded makes me wonder if it's spent a bit of time near the water um, there's a few actually all three shields that are that are here are looking a bit corroded apart from that everything's not looking too bad just looking at it we've got circuit boards with the valves mounted on, some of them mounted on circuit boards. Uh, some mounted direct to the chassis, which makes me think there's more bits and pieces underneath. Uh, capacitors, these are electrolytics here. They're older, good brand of electrolytic, but still quite old. I'm not going to go ahead and replace them straight away. I think. I'll take a look at some measurements and just see how things look after that. But yeah, everything's not looking too bad at all there. Let's have a look underneath it. Okay, well, here we are. It looks pretty clean underneath as well. Electrolytics from the power supply section down here. Uh, again, uh, same style of capacitors. Again, I don't think I'm going to just change these electrolytics out on spec. I think I might just take some measurements and see what it looks like and then make a decision. Uh, a couple of caps up here as well. While we're here, might just check the output transformer to make sure that looks okay. And even the mains transformer. So I'll just set that up. Okay, so I've got this meter connected up to the speaker terminals and just set to AC, there's a, it's a little bit of rubbish there it's showing and I've got the SIG Gen just set to 1 kilohertz and I've just got it uh, oh, actually on the primary of the output transformer so if we turn that on instantly that voltage comes up uh, 6 volts at the moment and if we wind that voltage up we see the voltage increase as well so that transformer looks fine okay so I'll just set up for the mains transformer test okay so I've got the signal generator set up on the primary uh, on the 230 volt tap and I've got the meter across one of the, the HC windings there should be a 160 volt winding and it's at 50 Hertz it's about 9 volts amplitude on that primary winding and if we wind down the voltage again we see a, a change which looks good. Now let's put this on the other winding and again yep, that transformer winding looks fine. Just see if we could pick up something on the heater. This transformer has two heater windings. Yeah, that looks that looks to be responding, so that looks okay. Yeah, again, I'm getting a response on there, so that's looking good. Okay, so the power transformer and the output transformer both look okay as much as we can tell at this point in time anyway so that's a very good sign we don't have a pile of junk sitting here so I think it might be time to maybe even hit it with a little bit of power with the dim light tester and see how the power supply looks
I just decided to take a bit of a look around the power supply circuit before I applied power and I found something very interesting. In my radio there is a giant choke between the H, this primary HT supply here and the secondary uh, supplies. So basically there is a big choke if you like this four wave bridge rectifier is connected to this capacitor and then there's a big choke to this point and this point here. This is a bit difficult to see but I've downloaded the service manual and the choke that I have sits, it's very large and sits in this location here. Here it is here. It's monstrous. So this is not standard, this radio. The other thing that I've found that's uh, not actually in the service manual are these two voltage references. That's not really an issue. These actually are mentioned in the circuit as being an option that can be inserted to help improve stability of the oscillators. And I believe it's for both of these supplies here. I'm not 100% sure and I will get to that. So there's a few markups I'm going to have to do on the circuit diagram for this radio. I can't identify anything else that is different. Now one other thing is I was just doing some cursory checks here and I actually found that this resistor, this 1k 4 watt resistor is open circuit. I don't have anything approaching a 1k 4 watt resistor here at the moment so I'm going to have to get one of those. There's not a whole lot of point powering it up without this HT in place. When the radio came to me I did know that it wasn't operational. With any sort of luck that might be it. Anyway I shall locate a 1k 4 watt resistor and then we'll get back to it. Okay well there you go. A little bit of progress there. I'll grab that resistor that's uh, the problem child at the moment and when I have it we'll get back to it. Okay, cheers for now. If you like what I'm doing, then please do like the video. If you'd like to see more, then please subscribe. And don't forget to hit the chime so you get notified when I post something new. And I'll put a couple of links here to some other videos you can look at.